Yeah, you know, this is an informal meeting I'm talking about microspores, dolan rot, and uh, like right now it's a big problem. Other and other things that are uh, a problem right now is uh, St. Augustine decline. Let me talk about St. Augustine decline. Here's so St. Augustine decline is a virus, and there's no cure for a virus because if, if we if we can cure their St. Augustine decline, we could cure cancer, common cold, all that, right? So the, I handed the lead plate to Ryan. This is St. Augustine decline. Yeah, and there's there's a lot more St. Augustine decline out there than people realize. And so since there's no fix, this is this is how you communicate to the customer. You know, you're gonna say, hey, you got, you know, you have, unfortunately, you have St. Augustine decline, and it's a virus, and that there's no chemical control for St. Augustine decline. But there are some varieties that are resistant to St. Augustine decline that you can plug in to your existing St. Augustine and just let it fill in, right? And so the, the main one is just gonna be Raleigh. Okay? And the other, uh, there's uh, Floritam, Seville, so that so that's what you tell them but what what they can expect is that their yard is just going to die slowly over time there's going to be times of the year where those the um the marks on the grass are, are aren't very noticeable and the grass will kind of look okay but over it, it takes several years for the, the, the grass to die and what will happen is it'll get real thin it won't respond to fertilizer and you'll start having Bermuda grass and, and other things kind of filling in where the, the thin areas, okay? And then, so what they do is they're gonna want to uh, either hire someone or do it themselves, go buy squares of Raleigh St. Augustine, that's my go-to, and then they're just gonna plug it in in parts of their yard and that, since that variety of St. Augustine is resistant to St. Augustine decline, it'll start moving out and taking over whatever St. Augustine they have that's infected with the St. Augustine decline. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can go to King Ranch, get to Raleigh. Uh, typically, Home Depot has a, a pallet of St. Augustine out this time of year, and you can buy sod by the square. Um, so the customer will just have to determine whether uh, how much they want to buy. St. Augustine decline. And so how, how they get it is one, it can originate <clears throat> in their own lawn, but the most likely scenario is that it was brought over from mowing equipment. So the most common transmission from one yard to the other is from a mower, an edger, a weed eater, something like that, that and especially when the yard is wet. So when the yard is wet, <clears throat> you cut it and the yard and the mower stays wet and, you, and then you go mow a yard a couple houses down with St. Augustine that isn't Raleigh or Floritan, you transmit that disease. And it's such a slow process that it takes years for it to really be a problem. Um, but that, that's how it's transmitted. So, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really blame the lawn mowing company too much because there isn't a lawn mowing company out there that cleans the bottom of their mowers after every Every mow, there isn't one. <laughs> I used to mow yards and I wouldn't do it either. It's just, it would take, it's too time consuming. So what they need to do is, like I said, replace it with Raleigh. Raleigh is res um, resistant to St. Augustine decline, which is a bigger problem than any of the other lawn diseases they could get. The downside is, is Raleigh is susceptible to brown patch, you know, and you're gonna, they're gonna get it in the fall um, there's two kinds of Raleigh St. Augustine. There's ones with brown patch and ones that's going to get it. So, uh, but it's that, that's easier to deal with than uh, uh, St. Augustine decline because there's no cure, and it, and it for sure will kill the grass. Next, the next topic today is going to be the Nigrostola, Nigrospora stolen rot, and here's an example of it. I'm just going to explain it before I pass it around. You're going to have lesions on the stolen here or the runner, and um, you see those, right? Yeah, and you see how it gets worse going down, and then it's just dead. Here's where the lesions were when the plant was alive, and how this differ differentiates itself from take all root rot is you see these long roots, okay, and they're tan. If this was take all root rot, these 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 roots would be very stunted, like. That's not a root, but like these small ones here, right? Not this one. Like 
that, and they would be black. <clears throat> and, the, and then the runners would be a little bit of darker brown or black color. Uh, and I, I keep a microscope in my truck to um, just to verify if it's um, take all root rot, but there's the lesions uh, on there. So what this Niagara Spora stolen rod is, it's an indicator of lawn that went into dormancy under stress. And there's, and there's no fungicide that's labeled for residential lawns that, that takes care of this fungus. So it's just gonna have to grow out of it and cultural practices are gonna have to be improved. This disease, it's an indicator of stress going into the fall, whether that's um, drought stress, brown patch, maybe the yard had grubs and affected the root system and you know and ate all the roots off and then the grass goes dormant in a weak condition and then when it's done, you know when it's coming out of dormancy it gets uh it's weak and it's weak all winter long um if you have winters that are get hot cold hot cold you know the st augustine doesn't like to go dormant all the way and so it, it you know struggles in that period of time doesn't know whether to be awake or asleep so it, it really struggles Another, another factor for this, this disease is really cold winter and a drought before. So like we had some bad weather, I don't remember if it was December or January. Remember Melody, we got a bunch of ice, yeah. like a, so yeah, much February. ice. February. Oh, it was February, okay. I, I thought it was December, so my bad. Well, we did have some bad weather in December, and then we had that ice storm that we didn't work for a week in February. So yeah, February. February. Okay, so it, it doesn't matter if they, uh, anything like that where you get a bunch of ice, that's very stressful to St. Augustine because from St. Augustine, all the runners are on top. So it's, it's really massively affected by snow and ice. Like, unlike Bermuda and Zoysia, where you have underground runners or rhizomes, that aren't exposed to the the snow and ice, but St. Augustine is. So, and we're lit. And, and St. Augustine, we're growing it right, right at the almost the northern mo most, most point where you can grow St. Augustine. You can grow it a little bit further north, but you know, the colder it is, the harder it is on uh, the St. Augustines. And some varieties are more cold tolerant than others. Um, but for just for the sake of St. Augustine decline, I personally recommend Raleigh. Again, it's not perfect. <clears throat> Niagara Spora stolen rod. And the, the lesions are right here. They're not they're not bad on this the green part, but how this is gonna have to grow out is just the, the healthy tissue of this is just gonna have to grow out of it. There's nothing you can do to the affected parts. There was, a, there was a fungicide that was available to uh, lawn care operators and uh, homeowners 15, 20 years ago. It was called Tusum, and then it's a combination of Rubigan and Dacanil. And Dacanil actually does uh, help to cure this disease, but it's not labeled for residential use, so we can't, as a lawn care provider, use this. Golf courses can use it. Have no. Well, there's part of some certain St. Augustine's that in Florida that has some St. Augustine in some areas. Florida, Florida, Houston. Florida, Houston. Houston. Yeah. I mean, they're probably not hitting golf balls. Maybe right? in the rough. You could break your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> break your wrist. If you've ever tried to hit a golf ball at St. Augustine, it's like impossible. You'll break your wrist. But, yeah. So there are condition codes in your tablet that have this Niagara Spore stolen rod. I've written an article in, in, in there, so whenever you select Niagara Spore stolen rod as a condition code, the customer will get a detailed description of what this disease is. You know, also their St. Augustine decline. To be watching out for the St. Augustine decline, because this is in my yard, and I've known I've had this for about a year, um, and so I need to uh, put some uh, Raleigh in. So I, I'm just going to go get, I don't know, 10 or 15 squares, and I'll put it I'll put it out. Are you going to use your soil plug? I could use my uh, soil plug, the uh, Pro Plugger. Yeah. You could use a Pro Plugger um, and take little, <clears throat> little round plugs and put them all over. You could do that. Uh, I'm just going to go buy 10 or 15 pieces of sod. Uh, my front yard's only about 2,000 square feet, so... 
and my St. Augustine client isn't so bad that it's dying. Actually, kind of, it, it looks okay last summer, but it, over time, it just it would just die, uh, die out. So, and I believe it's from, you know, I've had a mowing service at my house for, I don't know, I've lived there 15, 20 years. I don't remember exactly, but I've had a mowing service ever since. It could be my current mowing service. It could have been the one before. Yeah. Uh, who knows what it was? Because, like I said, it could take several years for you to actually notice the St. Augustine decline. So let's just keep that in mind. I think we have a meeting actually coming up. So that's it for today.